Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that, no, you're going too fast. And he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son. 18, of whom it was said that Isaac shall thy seed. That in Isaac shall thy seed be called. 19, accounted that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. And whence also he received him in a figure. Now let's jump all the way to 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. 32. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephas and of David also and Samuel and of the prophet. 32. Who through faith subdue kingdoms? This is what I'm looking for. Rough righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions. Mm. All this by faith. They subdue kingdoms, not by strength, by faith. They shut the mouth of lions, not by strength, by faith. They obtain the promise, not by strength, by faith. By faith. So you see what, what, uh, uh, how important faith is. Everything we are going to become, everything you will ever become, is according to the level of your faith. And one thing the devil attacks is your faith. But then there are laws governing faith. There are laws governing faith. So you don't just play faith game anyhow. There are laws that are governing faith. That is why in the book of 2 Timothy 2.5, the Bible says, And if a man strives for mastery, yet he is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. He strives for mastery, yet he is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. That means there are some laws that must be adhered to if he's going to be crowned. And the word lawfully, the word lawfully there simply means according to, to the law, unless he strives according to spiritual laws. Otherwise, his striving will be in vain. Unless he strives lawfully. So if you are not doing it according to the spiritual rules, please, it amounts to nothing. Except he strives lawfully. And we're going to strive lawfully this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we need to understand that there are laws governing faith. There are laws that governs faith. There are laws that governs faith. Praise the Lord. Paul made that clear in the book of Romans 3.27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Everybody say law of faith. Law of faith. But by the law of faith. So there is what we call law of faith. And everything we are going to become is according to our faith. So we must understand the law of faith in order for our faith to work. Because we are going to subdue nations by faith. We are going to shut the mouth of lions by faith. We are going to obtain the promise by faith. We are going to walk healthy by faith. We are going to manifest by faith. We are going to overcome by faith. Everything is by faith. But there is a law of faith. And until we understand the law, we struggle with faith. We strive, but we are not crowned because we are not striving masterfully or lawfully. That will not be our story in Jesus' name. Amen. So we better get this understanding. So that you don't become a Christian who just do things anyhow. You know, like for instance, when it comes to prayer. You know, everybody, we have a prayer guideline now. Somebody will put it down. Hey, God, this is what they gave us to pray. So I'm going to pray. And they say, when we pray, you answer. I'm going to pray. And then he's praying. 
And so people do that, they pray, they pray, and nothing happens. But there are some people that they just start, lift up their voice, and when they open their mouth, heaven starts responding. Because they, they understand the law of faith. They stand before God in that law, and God cannot deny himself. That is what your story will be. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Paul says something very crucial in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 2. He said, For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we see we're talking about laws here. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death from the law of sin and death so by what what the spirit of god was telling us through paul is that by correctly applying the law of life which is salvation and obedience you 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 set yourself free from the law of sin which is i mean from the law of death which is sin and disobedient so one law destroys the other one that's what paul will say here for the law of the for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. So one law is powerful than the other. So the law of the spirit of life is salvation and obedience. The law of the spirit of death is sin and disobedience. But one is superior to the other. So Paul was saying that I didn't have to strive for sin. I mean strive with sin. All I needed to do is to apply the law. Of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and then I was free from the other law that is why when you understand the principles of the laws you understand how the law the spiritual law works and you give yourself to it you are free from every harassment of the enemy Amen. praise the Lord Hallelujah. so it is by the law of faith it is by the law of faith so what god the, the spirit of god said in the book of romans 3 27 makes us to understand that faith has to do with observing some rules he said it's not of works nay but the law of faith the law of faith so it means faith has to do by observing some rules That is why I want to take my time and teach this morning. It's by observing.